good to go. Okay. Oh, we're all family here. Uh, <laughs> um, good morning. My name is Joanne, and I welcome you on behalf of the entire spiritual community here at Unity of Ocala. Uh, please join me for our opening prayer. Dear Father, Mother God, we give thanks for this day and all of the people who are gathered here. Where we are on the globe, we celebrate spring and renewal early. Renew us and refresh us, sweet spirit. We are grateful for your presence in our midst as we begin another year in the life of our church. May we be divinely guided as we go forward as Unity of Ocala, bringing the message of God's love. May we each be a light to others on the path. In the name of our Christ Jesus, our way show us. Amen. And we will have a music video by release and let go. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand If you, you are discouraged, struggling. 
to incite unity's foundational principle. There is only one power, one presence, active in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And when we live this principle, we are a thriving spiritual community here to inspire one another to realize God's love. Centered in the spirit of God, we see peace, love, and abundance in an awakening world. And the daily word for today, Sunday, February 26th, is let go, let God. I bravely release outworn behaviors and embrace my bright, brilliant future, holding on to what no, no longer serves me because it is familiar and I've grown accustomed to it, may stall my growth. I evolve much more quickly when I trust my guidance and I release old patterns and behaviors. In my heart, I know that when I move away from a dysfunctional relationship, a negative attitude, or an unhealthy way of living, I move towards something greater, peace, safety, harmony, freedom, and fulfillment. I let go of anxiety or fear and open myself to happiness and security. I breathe in freedom. My heart becomes buoyant and my steps lighter. I set my intention today to release anything I have been fearful of letting go so that I can confidently move forward, open to infinite good. And the scripture today is the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And now we have another music video I released by Beautiful Chorus. So things that no longer serve me. I release all things that no longer work for me. I release all things that no So 
Let those words in that music just wash through you. I release those things that no longer work for me, that no longer serve me. I release. I invite you to get very comfortable in your chair. Take off anything from your lap that might distract you. Take in a nice, deep, cleansing breath. Close your eyes if you like and just let go. Let it go. Anything that you have brought into this sacred space. Any worries, any busy thoughts, anything on your mind, your heart, let that go. This is your time. Your time with God. Your time to fully Embrace this sacred moment. Breathe. Your body naturally relaxes into a state of stillness. It's a natural state. Just observe any area where you might be tight, where you might be clinging or clenching. Just release that. Allow yourself to become open, fully journey to your heart, to your core. Feel your pulse, feel your beating heart, the miracle of you. God pulsing with every beat through you, healing you, nurturing you, sustaining you. Just open to receive, receive, feel gratitude. Journey deep within and allow your inner senses to come to life, to become finer tuned to that still small voice. Open your inner ears to hear more deeply your inner eyes to see more broadly, to see higher. Allow yourself inwardly to feel the movement of spirit, to sense it, to touch it, to taste it, to smell it. These inner senses are a direct conduit to those subtle messages of Let's together journey away from this place and time, away from the things of the world, with 
things of daily life. Join me in a beautiful meadow in the springtime when the flowers are starting to bloom around you. Vivid, beautiful colors like each has been splashed with a paintbrush. The gentle breeze, the warm sun, the chirping of birds, nesting, bringing new life. Just enjoy the peace of nature, the firm soil beneath your feet, the gentle vibrations of Mother Earth, Mother Nature preparing a new beautiful vista for a new season. We continue along a trail of flowers and greens all around you. Just observe what spirit is bringing you, what you are seeing, experiencing. You notice at the edge of the meadow, the edge of the field, looks like growth of trees, like a grove, dense, warming, welcoming. And you enter that grove with the beautiful trees flanking you all around, supporting you, guiding you through. Tall trunks, you look above, the leaves way above your head, like tall aspens. You hear the leaves above. You see glimmers of light shining brightly through the grove, you feel the warmth and are encouraged to continue through the trees, touch them, feel smooth and rough parts of bark. You observe the colors, the shapes, the smells. You feel at home here, at home here. You are a part of those beautiful trees that sap that is running up the trunks and into the branches, forming little buds, runs through you, the energy of life. You feel at one with everything around you. You see a little opening at the edge of the tree line and a bench waiting there for you. And you settle in and observe before you is a beautiful altar, whatever that looks like in your mind. A beautiful altar in nature, golden, bright, the light, shining, glimmering, glistening through the trees. You feel at total peace, an altar in the middle of nature, in the quiet, this beauty you rest and observe what spirit has for you in that altar. Observe in the quiet. Breathe.
as we prepare to come back to this place and time, let us set an intention for today and especially for this Lenten season to observe, to open, to be present to what is happening in and through us. God can do no more for us than God can do through us. Simply observe what is being drawn to you. Let us be reminded of the power of the presence of God always here in all ways. God will speak to us in a language we understand through nature through others, through ideas, thoughts, creative sparks, music, books, messages, animals. Let us feel how humbling that is, how precious, and with gratitude say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Oh, so sweet. The altar. Today is the first Sunday of the Lent and the Easter season first kind of leg as we began with Ash Wednesday on our journey to the resurrection. Last week we talked a little bit about the coming Ash Wednesday and I offered some homework. Did any of you do it? Clearing the way, preparing the highest version of the grandest life that God has for you and ways that we can begin to really achieve that without reducing our thoughts, our ideas, our vision. We can't out-dream God. We can't out-give God. We can't out-vision God. So we might as well vision as high as we can, as far as we can. <laughs> so I just gave you some simple exercises to help along the way in these wonderful unity principles. Getting rid of that which no longer serves you. We do that physically, emotionally, mentally. I asked you to just clear something out of your house. Did any of you do it? Yay, Mary, yes, 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 yes. Even if it's not a whole room. <laughs> you gotta help her. <laughs> Even yeah. better, because they help you get rid of things you probably wouldn't. And then, yeah, good for you. Didn't it feel good? Wow. It's like a <gasps> <gasps> Even if it's just a shelf in the bathroom, you know, Wh whatever. Even if it's just my tea cupboard, <laughs> whatever it is. It's just reminding, yes, yeah, stuff you've had for 30 years. It's just reminding us to open up, to let go. It's the physical aspect preparing us, and it's so powerful and usually serves as an impetus to keep going. So I've got a few more things today. Today, the first Sunday, represents the altar. Um, we're going to look at that in a couple of different ways because it's really scattered throughout the Bible. And particularly in all ancient cultures, all ancient cultures celebrated and had some sort of a ritual tradition involving an altar. Every religion, every indigenous tribe, some sort of altar for a variety of things. We're going to look at that. I want to say a few things first. I, um, <coughs> I have an altar. I've kept an altar. I have several of them, physical altars, um, outside, in my study room. And I've encouraged prayer chaplains to, to have this practice as well. It's a sacred practice. It's, it's built into our cells from our ancestors. And it is where I have the candles where I pray for people. It is where your prayer chaplains go to to remind them it's time to step away from the things of the world and honor those things of the spirit. And so there's things on your altar that might remind you 
of those places and those things, those items that calm you and soothe you, open you. Things maybe from the sea, from the forest, from the woods. I have candles representing different people, and I, I um, added a new candle on Thursday evening because I found out that a friend of mine had passed the day before, the morning before. A friend of, our, of ours, all of ours, Eric Pfeiffer. I sent a message out to most of you that I have email for. He's the gentleman that used to sit right there every Sunday and would come up after and give me a great big hug every Sunday. He would drive here from Tampa, not every, but most of his Sundays. 91 years old. And an amazing spirit. I am so grateful that I got to know him. So grateful. He was one of the first people that I met during the Appreciative Inquiry, before I was hired, um, during the Appreciative Inquiry that, that we did. And he was, I could tell he was a character just by how quiet he was and how observant. You know, you watch those that are really quiet. They're just taking note, you know. And I found out through the time that we had together what a prolific writer and deep thinker that he truly is, um, how witty. Eric and I shared um, a few things in common. His wife made her transition one week exactly before my husband made his. So we became fast friends and spoke often. I went to visit him in Tampa. And I'm telling you, you just have not lived <laughs> until you have driven with Eric 91-year-old in a huge car paying no mind to curbs or anything else and we're going all the way to Tampa during rush hour and I'm doing this <laughs> to a special hot dog place he wanted to take me and I'm so glad we went because it was absolutely fantastic but we had the best time. He was my friend. He will remain my friend. I received almost on a weekly basis at several times a month, a letter from Eric that he would type out, all different kinds of letters about him and the adventures of him from a young boy all the way through different thoughts, different, he had four wives, and different how they met and how he lost them, and how just such an amazing um, spirit to be around. I was so shocked. Um, I got the call from you guys. And it just knocked the feet out underneath me because I, there was no, <laughs> we've become so accustomed to the drama, there was no drama. There was no ambulance, there was no hospital visit, there was no medical incident. His son, who lives with him, heard him get up, so he started preparing breakfast, like they do, and then he didn't hear anything else, and he thought, what's going on? He went into the room, and he had gotten back into bed and passed got up and said, nope, <laughs> got back in. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. I would not want anything else for Eric. Well, I'm going to miss him. I know he's still around. I'm kind of feeling every now and then, you know. S he's not far, but it was just, I had a, a wonderful conversation with his granddaughter, who is a Unity person, North Unity Tampa in ministry wonderful spirit. I had a, I was stuck on the turnpike going to class, and we had a nice long conversation. And um, just what a giant of a man in that little statue. And I, I'm just still kind of figuring it out. But um, he's with Shirley. That I know. That's where he wanted to be. And I remember him calling me. We talked. Not long after both of them had passed, it was a little, a little bit. I went down. Actually, I went down to see him, <laughs> and it was a few months after. And he said, and he had written me a little bit about this, but we talked more about it. He said, "You know, Shirley does not want me sad. I was moaning and groaning and crying around here for way too long, and it just hit me. She does not want me sad. This is ridiculous." So he says, "I've gone on a dating site, and you need to too." I'm like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> and he's like, and, and here's my profile. And I'm, I'm reading it, and I'm like, gosh, I would date you, Eric. This is really good. He says, let me help you write one. I'm like, whoa. 
slow down there, Captain. <laughs> and he would keep asking me, are you dating? Are you having friends? Are you going to lunches? Are you going? He had four girlfriends <laughs> by the time I hadn't even got my thing out online yet. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? But he really, um, he was such a spark for me. He just encouraged me to get moving with my life. Life's too precious. Does your husband want you roaming around with, with nobody? I'm like, no, but <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not, if he's 91 and go out there and do that, who am I to? He will be an inspiration for me and many, many, many others for the rest of my life. I cherish our friendship. I cherish it. I had a talk with his son Earl last night, and who's just as delightful person, I can tell. And he just shared with me, he said, oh, you got some of his letters. Did they have the little stars all the way around the bars? <laughs> yes, it's on that, that computer paper that's, you know, you can tell he just runs it through his printer. And I'm like, oh, yes, he does that for the grandkids. And that, it was just such an honor to be part of that club where I get those little star letters. I've kept them all, and I will bring them from time. I have shared them before with his permission, and he told me I can share them. I, and there's a few that, that really need to be heard because his thoughts about God you know, you could tell he would just think about it so deeply. And wow, he really caused me to think and go deeper. And I hope I continue to get those sparks. I'm sure I will. And so um, my altar has a little deeper meaning heading into this Sunday, the Sunday of the altar. And the Bible talks about altars in different ways in different fashions. And it also talks about the building of such things. And it's, it's interesting how Unity students and other spiritual centers and students view the Bible as the evolution of man's consciousness about God. It's not the written word of God, of course. God doesn't come down with a little pencil and do this. It's the evolution of our consciousness and our understanding. And you can tell by prehistoric times what they were thinking about God in those times and the evolution of our thoughts about what is being spoken through the scriptures, which are timeless and wonderful if you peel away the, the layers of literalism, which has no business in the Bible, obviously, and look at the spiritual undertones. Because you can see where even from Moses, he was instructed to build a tabernacle, an altar of sorts, portable, to carry 40 years through the wilderness, to eventually be a solid temple. You know, unlike any other structure on the planet, and it was. So he carried a, around the Ark of the Covenant, that um, precious Holy of Holies. They're God in a box. They're little on a long pole. It was, it was like a box from all the pictures. We don't really know. And they carry it from tribe to tribe, carrying God with them. And then they evolved to finding their homeland out of the wilderness, the land of milk and honey, and the, the temple construction is to begin. However, it is to begin under King David. King David got elaborate design for this extraordinary temple from the amount of wood to use and what kind and how deep and thick and tall. And it was a majestic, um, amazing, even, even down to how much metal and where the metal is to be used exactly in all the details, 190 tons of gold, 380 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, 3,700 tons of iron. This is, a, this is a mega monument to God. This is where God's going to live. This is where God's going to be with us. Because it says in the scripture, let them build a temple so I may dwell with them. Israelites kind of left out that with them, not in the temple. It doesn't have anything to do with the physical construction. We didn't know that at the time. So under Solomon, because David had too much blood on his hands, his son Solomon began the construction. And it was an amazing structure, unparalleled on the planet. None of it's there anymore. None of it's there anymore. Parts of the second temple are. Isn't that something? The Kabbalists, which is the mystical realm of Judaism, talks about the altar as a place in our consciousness and the building of the temple a place in us. And the construction is as detailed inwardly as it is detailed in those scriptures with each precious metal, each precious stone, each part of the wood representing 
that in us which needs to be built up in order to fully appreciate and understand the God that dwells within. Isn't that beautiful? We'll talk more about that on Wednesdays going through this season, the metaphysics of that structure building and how it is an internal process. It was thought for hundreds of years that in the center where Moses brought the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant, in the very center of that vast, huge temple was the holiest of holy. And there was only one person at a time that could enter the holiest of holies, and it was the highest high priest to enter the holiest of holies, where God was in this ark, this little God in this precious little room. And this high priest actually had to have a rope tied around him to enter into the ark, so that if he died in there, nobody else was to enter, they were to pull him out. <laughs> it's in their chronicles <laughs> and Exodus, um, because that's where God was. So you can begin to understand how we started pushing God away from us, from a Yahweh to God, right? Away from us somewhere else. And if the temple's destroyed, what then? With every invasion of other tribes and the Israelites were forced into exile, living in the diaspora, they became more understanding that God was still with them. Did it take all that peril? Not sure. They came to an understanding in Babylon, even though they still looked to the east to pray and to honor, and they would build their altars there for him. 80% of them didn't want to go back to Israel, did not want to go back to the homeland. They were beginning to understand there was an evolution taking place in the understanding. And Charles Fillmore perhaps grasped this idea, at least for me, for my understanding, better than most spiritual teachers have. So I wanted to share with you his thoughts about this first Sunday, the altar. And Charles writes, the altar represents a fixed, definite center in the consciousness of man. It is a place within where we meet face to face and are willing to give up all that does not serve us, does not serve the higher good. That does take work. It takes inner construction. To give up the lower for the higher, the personal for the impersonal, the animal for the divine. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. And there was an evolution in the thought of those ancient Hebrews. No more sacrifices on the altar. It is now a table of offering yourself and offering bread to others. Come dine with me, break bread. We no longer have the animal sacrifices. You can see it shifting. So where are we in this evolution? Are we still stuck with God in a box? Somewhere out of reach? Somewhere I take with me on Sundays, maybe let him out of the box for a while, let her out of the box for a while. I'll be good today, let God run around. Where is God with you? And if you want to feel the power of that residing God within and are not feeling it in a way you really want to, let's do a little temple building. Let's do a little altar building. And an altar is a great physical way to be reminded. The Hindu have a great practice at the altar every morning. The women and children go, and they set it up, and they offer to God fruits, fresh flowers that they go gather for that day, every day, at the temple, at the altar, in their home. One of the greatest ways that we can firm up this inner construction is with our prayer life. With our prayer life, chaplains know this, that affirmative prayer, prayer treatment, Myrtle Fillmore would talk about. A reaching out of the mind for a fuller realization of its source. That's what Charles says about it. Prayer does not change God, it changes us. Sincere desire is a form of prayer. What is your sincere desire? What are you building on your altar internally? That is your prayer. 
It is desire, earnest, intense desire that draws the whole being up out of mortality and in its transient joys into the power to appreciate and receive all real blessings. You know what your work's going to be this week, right? To build an altar. If you already have one, let's clear it off and start over. Springtime. A few candles I'm going to keep on there. <laughs> Springtime. This is a demonstration, the proving of a truth principle in one's body and affairs. It is the manifestation of an ideal when its accomplishment has been brought about by one's conformity in thought, word, and act. It is so important. We're going to go through the red string uh, experience in Wednesday's class. As a reminder, it is so important, especially during this trek to the resurrection, to be so mindful of our thoughts and our words and our actions and our feelings. What are you putting on that altar of God? What are you offering up? Because that's what's coming back. What did you see during the meditation that spirit is signifying to you to put on your altar? Something, something that you're drawing to you that you may not even be aware you're drawing to you, but spirit knows. Be mindful. Be mindful of the clothes you pick out. Be mindful of the breakfast you choose. Be mindful. Be in the moment. And I want to end with this part that Charles says. Kneeling at the altar, and that means getting out of your way, becoming humble and open and pliable and vulnerable. Kneeling at the altar, I take my statement of truth and hold it steadily in mind until I get my realization, the logic of my mind is satisfied, and there is a lifting up and expanding of soul consciousness. And to this end, I affirm, it is not I, but the Father abiding in me that does the work. Let's get to work on those altars. And to Eric, my friend, this one's for you. Yes.
The ushers come forward, please. Divine love flowing in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Now we'll we'll have the prayer box blessing. These are held in prayer here by our prayer chaplains for 30 days, and then they're sent on to Unity Village, where they are prayed over 24 hours a day for an additional 30 days. We ask the blessing for all of those who have put a prayer in this prayer box for themselves, for another, prayer works. Amen. And I think it's time to bring our children forward for a blessing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. Six kids, wonderful, so wonderful to have you. We love you, we see you loved, guided, and protected, and we empower you to do great things. And today's prayer chaplain, um, I haven't been informed of who that is, Bruce. Okay, Bruce um, will be here at the front to pray with you or for you. There are other prayer chaplains with us today as well. If Bruce uh, isn't available, will all of the prayer chaplains rise, please? So we can give you a blessing. All right, thank you. Okay, um, do we have any first-time visitors here today? Okay, we have a, a little visitor package for you, and we also have a special blessing for you. We love you. We bless you. We say we trust in you. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you, we bless you, 
and we behold the Christ in you. Wonderful to have you. Uh, okay, uh, since we're having the all-member meeting today, there will not be any unity discussions. It will resume, those will resume next Sunday after service. Wednesday classes continue this Wednesday from 12.30 to 2.30. And they're always a wonderful experience. We learn, we share. Um, it's just a, a great if you can make it, please do so. Uh, and of course, the all-member meeting will take place uh, after the service. It's open to all active members, and even if you are not an active member, you are invited to stay if you wish to do so. You just won't be able to vote because we're voting on some issues today. Uh, the book club will be meeting next Sunday, March 5th, following the service, and May will be our facilitator for that. And tell us the book again, May. The Art of Forgiveness, Loving Kindness. Yeah, okay. And um, please refresh yourselves after the service. We have a lot of food. Um, just in case, you know, we're going to be here a bit longer for the meeting, and we want you to be well nourished. So please help yourselves. <laughs> you don't want to get hangry. No hangry. Uh, no hangry. Are there any other announcements? Shirley. Yes, get your ballot, um, sign in, and the forms are. Um, not only that you wish to continue as a member, but also if you have any updates to your email, your mail address, anything like that, we need to know about it. So please fill those out. And I think we are through, unless, Reverend Lloyd, you have any other announcements? Okay. Well, let us have the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. <laughs>